do you notice uh, with music, you'll have seasons that are super busy. You're like, how do I survive? How do I learn all mm. these mu- you know songs? Uh, you know, it seems like a lot. But then there's seasons that are are quieter. Yeah. Right? So take last year for example. Like normally, summertime is busy. That's just a given for any musician. But for me, I was busy from the top of the year mm-hmm. until the end of the year. Mm, that's rough. Which never happens. Right. But again, like it's coming out of two years of restrictions. Yeah. And COVID. Things went crazy. And now everybody's going crazy. Everybody wants to have a show. Everybody wants to go on tour. Everybody wants to do this. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants to do this event and this mm-hmm. networking event. So it's like oh my God, we don't have restrictions. So I can plan all these things again. And it's like, okay, I want to do this. But then I also want to perform myself and get out there. But I found that I didn't have as many performance opportunities for myself. I Mm -hmm. felt that, you know, I was out there helping everybody else, Mm -hmm. right? Playing for this person and this. I think last year I played for almost 30 people between January and December. That's a lot. And a majority of those were in the summer. Yeah, all crammed. <laughs> all crammed in. And it was like, okay, I literally had to start writing out all of my charts. Yes. Because there's so many people. It was like, okay, I'm writing charts for this artist. And then next week I have to write charts for this artist. And then next week I have to write charts for this artist. Because it was like, this artist had a rehearsal. And then I had a show with another artist the same week. Mm-hmm. I'm like, where did this influx of of artists come from wanting to perform? And I burnt out mm-hmm. by the end of the year because I was doing that. I also had my day job mm-hmm. and I also had my evening job mm-hmm. while trying to learn all this music in between and then still producing content every week. So here's my question to you. <laughs> yeah. Would you do that again in the exact same way? Absolutely not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think I would be more selective as to who whose project or whose songs or whose events I'm going to take on. Um, But the most important thing is I had to focus on myself because I didn't give myself any room. So I had to make myself the main character. Ooh, I have a a (laughs) a, a little question for you. How do you say no to people or or set up a boundary? (laughs) You know what? One of the things that I had to learn in this industry was to know your value. Ooh. Know your worth at HST. Ooh, okay? HST. So I know it's different for different countries, but in Canada, it's HST. 13%. Well, in Ontario, it is. <laughs> but I think last year, I did, wasn't really thinking about that because it's like we all want to get back out there because, you know, we had two years where we weren't able to actually go and perform and Mm -hmm. there weren't many performance opportunities because of all the restrictions. So now it's like, oh my God, everything's back. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I'm going to take everything and I'm going to fill up my plate and not realize what am I doing? This is too much. And then thinking about it in, in hindsight and like I really didn't need to take all these gigs. And then I kind of like kind of lost my value a little bit Mm -hmm. because of all of the opportunities I was getting. I was like, oh, yeah, I get to play with this artist. I get to do this event and this event, not realizing, am I really diminishing my value by taking all of these things? So I had to really think about it this year. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to subject myself to taking all these things just because like I have to really sit down and think, what is my value? I know that the skills that I possess, the, the what I bring to t- the table, the amount of things that I do is worth way more than taking on all of these projects. And when you said value, I thought you meant like financial, like, oh, a, a rate. Well, financial is a part of it as well, mm-hmm. too, but the, just in general, like how you view yourself. So value doesn't necessarily have to be money and monetary Mm -hmm. right and i think when we use the word value that's like the first thing that comes up is there's monetary value. of course like it's important to like be cognizant of those things like how much you're charging and based on you know the amount of experience and the amount of like educational background and just what you have done in general like that's important but also like for yourself Mm -hmm. 
How do you value yourself? Right? That's something that we need to think about as well, too. So it doesn't have to necessarily be monetary. Mm -hmm. nice. And it's like, do you feel value by taking so many different opportunities? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Our favorite phrase, uh, how are you doing? Oh, I'm busy. Uh -huh. I'm busy. <laughs> Which means, uh, low-key, I'm important. Right? I'm busy. I'm not yeah. busy, therefore I'm not important. Like, we just relate the two. But right? are you really not important if you're not busy? No, you're just having some time to yourself. Practice, go clean your room. You know, yeah. go do, go say, go meet, go say your friends, go, go yeah. recharge yourself, yeah. sharpen that axe, go exercise, do two push ups. Yeah. 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 You're not, you're not, no, you don't not have value if you're not busy. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think that we do that a lot. We like to tie our value to being busy. Right. And that's not necessarily the case. Value is way more than busyness and way more than money. It's how you see yourself mm -hmm. and how you view yourself. Because if you know how you view yourself and your value, then people are going to also see that. Right. 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 So if your value is tied to money. Oh, that's even worse as an artist. That could be very depressing in November. Yeah. Just, or whatever, January. Because when November, well... <laughs> Yeah, January, January, the first quarter be, of the year. You feel not too too great because you're not making any money. Right, and you're tying your values right. to the f to a piece of paper. Yeah. Anyhow, um, yeah, good talk. Mm -hmm. Let's play and talk, like, yeah, because uh, I'll put my ears in. We'll just, you know, let's play yeah. some. Music. You have a mic in there? I do. I do. Okay. Let's let's, let's right, switch into our mic. spot.
bass player i know right and, and guitar man's woman slash yes you know we, we need a bass uh, a, a bass woman and, and a, an organ a guitar man. yes organ. yes and singer yes we singer need, we need the whole the whole crew we need the whole shebang i know right hmm. ideas are forming yes they are they are oh why is that working uh oh one second do you still remember how to play um that uh, Michael Jackson song that we did. Which one? Uh, I wanna rock with you. Rock with you. Hey.
Dude, that was like last summer we did that. Hmm. <laughs> I have to do the intro again. Like, I know, eh? Yeah, that's it. That's how it, that's how it goes. That's how it goes. Yeah. yeah. So. Social media, you gotta love it and you gotta hate it at the same time. But this is the way to, you know, promote yourself. So I'm gonna show you guys my uh, Instagram profile. So you guys have an idea of what I do. So something that's important to do is your bio. Like think of your social media platform as your resume right your potential resume so if people are going to come and they're going to see your resume they're going to look at your bio they're like oh, okay what do you do yeah i'm an artist now i've had to change this multiple times because i don't know a lot of people know me as a musician a lot of people know me as an artist it just depends but because i am an artist i'm just going to put artists and i don't think i can do both artist slash musician because Instagram doesn't have that option. They need to change that, but anyways. So uh, put here, it's my username here. Um, yes, I have lots of posts and every year I contemplate whether or not I want to delete posts. Because I get people that ask, should well, if this is your resume, should you like, it's like updating your resume in person, like in Word, should you delete certain things, right? But I feel like it's different when it comes to social media. Like in real life, when you have to hand out resumes, obviously you're gonna change up your resume for whatever job you're applying to, right? So if you're applying for a customer service job, then all of your experience is gonna be customer service. If you're applying for uh, a teaching job, then all of your experience is going to be educational. Now, when it comes to social media, uh, you are sharing your entire profile, right? So. A uh, little side note here. This is my second Instagram page. My first Instagram page got hacked back in 2021. And that's the thing about social media. You have to be very careful <laughs> um, about some of these DMs that you accept because it's like you think it's Instagram, but it's really not Instagram. And that was my fatal mistake. I got a DM from Instagram thinking it was Instagram and they asked me to log in and all that stuff. And then as yeah, next day I couldn't log into my account. And I had built that account from the ground up from the day I got Instagram, which was, I believe, 2013, up until 2021. So that's eight years of work I put into that page and gone. But um, I saw it as a, both a, a con and a pro. So yeah, the con was I lost all of my work that I put in, but the pro was I'm my uh, my sound as an artist was changing. And so was my image as an artist was changing. So when it comes to like images and stuff like that, um, a lot of people will notice that I do a lot of photo shoots and stuff because, you know, I always have to update, you know, what I look like because I am changing my look all the time. If you haven't noticed already, my hair changes like every, every month I change my hair. Um, don't ask me how I afford it. I have nice people. Um, but yeah, I just feel like I'm always growing and evolving as an artist. So my look changes from time to time. Sometimes I have braids. Sometimes I have uh, curls. Sometimes I have straight hair. Uh, that's just unique to who I am. Like I'm a chameleon. So I'm always changing all the time. Um, I mean, my face never changes. It's always the same as just my hairstyle. But it's it's crazy how a hairstyle can really change change up your look, right? Um, so I decided that, you know, I'm going to go back to wearing straight hair. So I did that. And um, those are the photos that you see there. Those are very recent photos that I just did. But this is like me coming into a new era of myself. I call it the main character era, right? So I'm the main character in my story. And um, I say that because this year it was a intentional year of focusing on self and focusing on me. And I actually released a project last year in 2022 called Self, right? So it was all about self-care, self-love, and self-reflection. So I spent most of 2022 doing that and more so into this year, 2023, um, just re reflecting on myself, reflecting on uh, just, you know, childhood traumas, uh, 
reflecting on who I am as an artist right now and who I want to become. And that's kind of just the premise of even just a lot of my photo shoots as well, too, like giving people different sides of me, right? Um, people often say that uh, social media is not real. And I, I agree to that to an extent, at least for myself. Like the same person you see on social media is the same person you see in person. Like I am the same, whether I'm on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, same person, right? Um, so my page is real. Everything you see there is real. Uh, however, people don't see all the hard work that you put in. They don't see all the hard work behind the scenes. So um, the photos, for example, like sometimes it takes a while for me to get into the groove when I am doing a photo shoot, right? Trust me, <laughs> I had to work to get these photos to look like this, right? And even if you just see like, I am big on presentation and how I showcase myself on my socials. Like everything is very like color coordinated, it's neat. Um, I make sure that I show pictures of like my performances, my flyers. I love the fact that you can pin your posts. Instagram was smart when they allowed you to pin your posts. So for example, if you have like a music release or something that you wanna promote, you can pin up to three posts. I think it should be six, but <laughs> uh, three, three is the magic number. So because I just did a photo shoot and this is kind of like the era I'm in, this, these are the pin posts that I have. You can also pin your reels as well. Um, they used to allow three, but as of recent, they cut it back to two. I don't know why they did that. Um, I don't think that was smart. Um, but yeah, you can see like all of my, um, all of my reels here, there's a lot of them, so I'm not even gonna go through them. Um, but that just goes to show you how much content I post. At one point, I was posting every single day. And when you're getting started on social media, some, that's kind of what you have to do, especially if you're trying to, if the intention is to grow your, your base. Like you kind of have to do the most <laughs> at the beginning, but not to the point where Instagram thinks it's spam. So you have to be careful with that as well, too. But in the beginning stages before, you know, Instagram was this the way it is now, I had to post every day I was posting something, whether it was a photo or um, I posted a cover that I did. And I, through that, I came up with a lot of different I, creative ideas. Like I had a Cover Tuesday series. For five years, I ran that series from, from 2017 until last year year i guess well 2021 um and i posted a cover i committed to posting a cover every tuesday every single tuesday for five years and did it right and you have to be committed when it comes to content it's and content creation is not easy it's it's very draining it's very taxing because it's like you have to come up okay well what's the next once it's done okay what's the next thing i can do right and you have to keep up with the demand of your of your fan base, right? If they like things that you're doing, it's like, okay, we I need to consistently do that. So I started off with covers. So I did cover Tuesdays. I created my graphics. I get a lot of questions from people. Where do you create your graphics? Canva, okay? Pay the $16.99 a month, okay? And just get all of the features. Like, yeah, you can, you can do the free uh, version, but you don't have access to all of the features invest and just pay the $19.20 after taxes every month and just pay. And you have access to so many features on there. And even just like um, this graphic, for example, that's a series that I started a few weeks ago called Chords for Your Soul, because I always get people wanting to know like, oh, um, what kind of fat chords do you use? So I created a series called Chords for Your Soul, which includes a lot of the fat chords that I use. And I've been doing this series for, I think, four weeks or so. Um, and then, of course, in that graphic is my logo, right? So that's another thing as well that I get questions about your logo. Like, do you need a logo as a musician? Do you need a logo as a content creator? I think that a logo will um, allow you to stand out, right? And kind of disting distinguishes who you are. Um, in the niche because there's so many different musicians, right? There's so many people in music. So you wanna have something that 
no, distinguishes who you are. And I worked with my graphic designer uh, for almost a year trying to put this together. And uh, I wanted something that embodied who I was and that just re represented my brand and who I am just as a person. Like my thing is inspiring lives one music note at a time. I've had that since the day I became a teacher, a piano teacher. So that's what, 2005? So I wanted a logo that embodied that. So as you can see, the two Ds there represents my name, Desiree D. And then the, on the second D is a piano, right? And then if you look at the first D is a outline of my face. So my graphic designer asked me to send a bunch of different photos and she took the silhouette of one of the photos and added it to the to the logo so it's unique to who i am it's not basic it's not uh you know oh that just looks like a plain old logo no that actually represents who i am and you'll notice in all of my videos that i have it somewhere in the corner right so that's because that's me it's my brand so if, even if i do a cover it's my arrangement of it so put my logo right in the in the corner there as well right um i also what else did i do i did a lot of things covers i did what you call reharmonization so what i did was i would take songs and i would reharmonize them to how i would you know play that song right that got popular as well too i was doing that i also did a series called 30 second collabs because i was always getting requests from people to collaborate can i collaborate with you um yeah, I don't do it much these days because like I said, I'm focusing on myself right now um, and I will just prioritize uh, certain um, collabs and everything like that. But yeah, it's just important to make sure that your page looks like, you know, you are representing yourself, right? Um, you wanna have a variety of things. So like professional photos, per performances, pictures of your performances, flyers, uh, yeah, and then of course your content and then just make sure it's like diverse and whatnot. Um, sometimes I post uh, like this graphic, for example, over here, I post like my um, my performance dates that I have coming up, right? So people know when I'm performing because people will be like, oh, well, when, do you have any shows coming up? Yeah, it's on my page, right? And even just like the videos that I, I, I do, like if you notice, it's front facing. <laughs> I had to get very comfortable doing that because I didn't want to show my face at one point. So in the past, a lot of my videos were like off to the side because I'm like, I don't want to show my face. But as I got more confident in my abilities, I was like, no, you know what? I'm going to let people see my face. <laughs> but then it's also like your face is important too. Like the, even the way you perform, like you want people to be able to like read your body language. Like is she really enjoying what she's doing or is she's not enjoying what she's doing? And... <laughs> I remember somebody telling me, you should smile more in your videos because I'm so like, when I'm into it, I'm serious, right? So what I did was, okay, let me test this theory. So I started facing the camera to my face. So now you can see like, yeah, I'm into it. I love what I do, right? And that should show on your page. You love what you do, right? And then the odd time I'll promote a business like my, my sister's business here. And she did my, my face. So sometimes I'll do that. It just depends, right? Um, but most of the time, I save those promotions for my stories because this is this is my resume. So I'm I'm building my resume. Like people that I perform with as well too, um, I put that in as well. And of course, you know you gotta celebrate your birthday, right? Birthday photos are in there as well. So um, enough of that. If you go and look at my numbers, you'll be like, oh my god, you have 18.5 followers, right? And um, you have a lot of posts. I'm like, yeah, well, I'm not going to delete any of my posts because I'm just going to keep everything. Notice my bio, right? You want to put what you do, who you are type thing. Um, I'm known in the city as Toronto's Queen of Vibes. I did not give myself that title. I was given that title. So I just took it and ran with it, right? Um, I put that I'm an award-winning instrumental fusion artist, which I am. I did win an award through uh, Sirius XM earlier this year. Um, so I put that. Uh, I also work with a company called Radio Pushers, and I'm the head of um, digital engagement. So I put that in my bio because with the company, uh, people that join the company um, as an artist, they come to my page and they want to see like, oh, okay, she represents Radio Pushers, right? And then 
because my account has been hacked, because I've had impersonated accounts made of me, I had to put this. This is my only IG account. And if you notice, a lot of like celebrities and um, influencers do that because people are always making fake pages on them. I've had two fake pages made on Instagram. I've had fake pages made on Facebook. So I'm just like, why aren't you guys? Ha why haven't you guys verified me yet? Because this is <laughs> this is ridiculous, right? So. Um, I put that there so people know, like, if there's any impersonated accounts made of me, they know, like, this is my real authentic page and any other page don't even communicate with them. Right. And then here I would put, like, if I have a song that I just released, I'll put, like, you know, listen to the song or stream this song. Or for now, I just put stream my music catalog because I don't have any new music out right now. Um, yeah. And then in terms of numbers. So when I got my account back because uh, I was working with a social media company before I got my account back. And they kind of just boosted my numbers to where they were because before my account was hacked, I had about 25,000 followers. And that was like a mixture of my work. I got to 10,000 on my own. And then the social media company came in and kind of helped, helped me in that regard. But um, I'm still rebuilding because my engagement is not where it used to be. So I have to build back my engagement but how do you boost your numbers so obviously having good content is really important uh, and then also you want to make sure that you're looking at your analytics okay so your analytics obviously i can't show you on this thing but if you go on your mobile app uh, you want to make sure that you have a creator account or a business account to be able to see analytics because if you have just a personal account um, you won't be able to see any analytics. So you need to have a personal, I'm sorry, a creator account, which is what I have, or a business account. So if you are a business and you want to see your numbers, one of the, or they call it a professional account, whatever they call it on Instagram. Uh, that way you can check, track your analytics. So it's been a lot of trial and error for me, at least with my first account that I had. I got to 10,000 followers by myself. And that was a contribution of the amount of content that I posted, um, as well as looking at my analytic numbers, and then also knowing when to post and what time to post, right? So uh, if you look at my reached audience, this is this uh, 90 days worth, right? So in the last 90 days, I've reached this many accounts. It's been more than that, obviously, because I can't show last year. Last year, I did more. This is just from this year, February to May. And then you'll see something here called reached audience. So this is the audience that you're reaching. And these are the cities that I've reached in the last 90 days, right? Um, and then you also have uh, top countries. So um, from as long as I can remember when I had Instagram, the United States has always been rocking with me. <laughs> they always have been. Uh, Canada can do better, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, this just goes to show you like what countries are like really engaged with my content, like with the countries that I reach with my content is mostly in the US, which is um, not surprising. Right. Um, and then this little section here is like the amount of fo uh, followers that are I'm reaching and then the amount of non followers. You see the huge difference there? And it's like, who can we translate those numbers <laughs> to followers? I mean, not everybody will follow. But I mean, I'm not reaching out to 38,000 people. <laughs> That's a lot of people to reach out to. But yeah, looking at your numbers, right? And then I have the top age ranges. So this is key. So I've been going back and forth between age ranges. So 25 to 34 and 18 to 24. Those two are my most popular age ranges. And it's so funny, 18 to 24, I'm not surprised because I don't look my age. So I'm 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 surprised I'm not surprised that that number is high, um, but I'm in the top range for my age. I'm in the top range, right? So a lot of people that are my age, like late nineties, early night, um, late eighties into like mid nineties, right? Range there, um, in terms of age, right? So what I've done to reach other people is I've done ads. So yes, you're gonna have to spend some money, right? Because I mean, most of the time, um. You can only rely on, you know, engaged audience without paying for so long. You kind of have to really invest in um, your own Facebook and Instagram and 
TikTok marketing. So I would do ads. So if I had like a, a video, I would do an ad. I would figure out some of my top countries. And I would also translate this to my music pages. So like Spotify and Apple Music. And I would go through there and see w what countries are top on the list. And I would promote to them through Instagram. And then I would pick the age ranges. And I would only um, reach to that demographic. And that's where I've gotten a lot of followers from by doing that. But that's because I took the time to research my analytics and see, okay, which countries am I reaching? What kind of people? Mostly men, because yeah, this is what it is when you're a musician, right? Men are always going to rock with me. I mean, this, so it is, right? I'm hoping that number <laughs> changes. But that just goes to show you, right? And then you have accounts that are engaged. Obviously, I did much better last year, but that's okay. Um, and of course, like Toronto's there, which is very nice. Thanks, Toronto, right? But then this is just based on like followers, not followers, right? Uh, and then you have top countries again, the United States. They rock hard for me, I tell you that. Um, and then top age ranges, okay? So this one's a little bit different. It was more, you know, my age group, I guess. Uh, but you can see, like, these three have always been the top ranges for me in terms of, you know, who my um, audience is. And, of course, it's always men. I mean, it's the same thing on, on my TikTok page as well, too. Uh, but this just goes to show you, like, yeah, my growth, like, I'm working on these numbers, you know. Um, and then Instagram is weird at times as well, too. Like, uh, sometimes they'll just delete a bunch of fake accounts. So sometimes, like, fake accounts are following and Instagram just kind of goes through a purge and purges them out, which is okay. Please do that so that I don't have to. Um, yeah, and then this is just, like, um, the countries, cities, countries. I didn't even get the countries, but that's okay. These are just cities here. And then top age ranges. There we go with those same two age ranges. Oh, I'm surprised I even had this. Oh, you know why? Okay, so on Instagram, you can change the age of people that are watching your content. So if you want it to be all ages, right? Or you can change it to just um, 18 and above, which I have it now, but I didn't know that they changed it. Where it's like it's open to everybody, but I had to go in and actually like change that content right so there is an option to do that yet you have to do it in your settings and whatnot now this right here most active times this is the key this is the game changer here now they have websites where you can go on and actually see from a global perspective when the best time to post on instagram is now according to the research that i found the best day of the week to post on Instagram, I'm just pulling up my, my notes here, is Wednesday at 11 a.m., so they say, right? But this is just like general posts, so like photos, videos, um, not reels. Now, they say if you want to post reels, they say to post between 9 a.m. and 12 p.m., Monday to Thursday, right? Um, I have found success um, between the hours of 3 and 6 p.m., and Instagram is normally favorable for any posts that are posted at 6 p.m. So that's just a little insider information. Um, and you wonder why people get lots of views. Post between 3 and 6 p.m., especially on Mondays and Wednesdays and Thursdays, right? Um, Sundays is not really the best day to post. Saturdays is like second to that. Um, I found that posting Monday, Monday to Thursday is your best bet um, mostly like midweek so like Wednesday Thursday is the best but this is just on a global perspective you'd have to actually go into your own analytics and see when the best days and hours to post now for me I, I don't have it shown on there but normally the top two times that are popular for me are 12 p.m and 3 p.m most days right so I tend to post my content at that time I know some people are working and whatnot, but that's okay. But those are like my top two. And that's just across the board from Monday to Sunday. Those are the top times. But I also do use the global time as well. And the same thing for um, TikTok as well. I'll show you my TikTok page here. This is just my engagement alone for the last seven days. So 
um, and then followers. I have almost uh, close to 25,000 followers. This is all organic followers. None of these are paid. None of these are, I never signed up with a social media um, market campaign. This is strictly organic. So, um, and I've been on TikTok. I had TikTok in the beginning stages of the pandemic when it came out, but you know, I wasn't really into it like that. And I was like, I don't have time to learn all these dances and stuff like that. So, and I was spending most of my time on Instagram and Facebook anyways. So I came back on at around April, April, 2021. And what I did was I would repurpose my content. So I would post whatever I was posting on Instagram, I'd post on TikTok. And yeah, I had low numbers in the beginning and I only had like 100 followers in the beginning. And then one day I posted a video back in 2022, January, and I just left the app alone. I came back and it started growing like crazy, like exponential growth. And I didn't use any of the fancy hashtags or anything that they were using like FYP for your page and all of that. I didn't use that. Just posted it and I left it alone and came back and it started growing to the point where now I'm gonna show you the numbers. Hopefully I can get back to my my page here. Uh, where is the video? Uh, see, I don't know why they don't show my pinned post. But anyways, it's a video that's like way at the bottom. Let me see if I can find it here. Yeah, you can see all of my content is very organized. Um, because that's really important, especially for TikTok. Um, where is it? Yeah, see, I have so many videos. But anyways, that video has to date 99,000 views. So it's about to hit 100,000 views, yeah, hopefully in the next week or so. Um, and I was like, oh, I can pull these kind of numbers? So I said, let me test this theory. And my following went up as well, too, because of it. So I said, let me test and see if I can get these numbers again. So as you can see, I have a lot of like different series that I started, like Suss the Scales and Shout Music Progressions and Church Service Progressions and um, uh, teaching people about suspensions and teaching people about dominant sevens and stuff like that. So uh, I'm not a fan of shout music. I'm just being honest. I don't like it. I think it's overrated. It doesn't need to happen all the time. But um, I decided to do a series on it, something out of my outside my comfort zone, but I did it anyways. And I uh, did, it was a five, I think all of my series are five parts. So I think that I did, that was a five part series as well that I did. And yes, here it is right here. <laughs> you can see that's 102,100 right now. So when I posted, the day I posted that video, in less than 24 hours, 20,000 views. In less than 24 hours. Yeah. So now it's at 102. So my most watched video right now. And then I have another one that's at 99. And I have another one that's at 90. It just got to 90 today. Um, but yeah, I was just testing and... Honestly, I started using the hashtags as well too, which kind of helped. And then also the time of day that I post. I found that when I posted on Sundays, that's when my numbers blew up. Yeah, Sundays at 4 p.m. on TikTok was hot. It's hot time, that's when everybody's on there, right? And it's funny because on TikTok, they say that the most um, popular time is Thursday at 7 p.m., right? But again, that's just from a global perspective. Like you have to look at your own analytics and figure that out and see when's the best time to post just based on your reached audience and your engaged audience, right? Um, I reach a lot of accounts and most of them are engaged, which is nice, right? But also hashtags have to do with that as well. So anything like any of my videos that I post, I appeal to like hashtags like gospel musicians or church musicians or those are like, main hashtags and of course I make sure I put my hashtag on there so when people look at my hashtag they see oh, she has like 1.5 million views all together um, and then I've seen people actually use my hashtag <laughs> as well too it's from random videos that they have you know but they see that I have a million views over a million views so they're going to use it and see if they can get a million views people do it that's just how TikTok is but you have to really look at your own numbers and your own analytics and just base your posting off of that. And then just make sure you have engaging and creative content, right? Make sure you're, you're um, 
your text is bold, right? I know nowadays people are using um, audio generated text in their video. So if you're um, talking in your video, make sure you have audio generated video, like text and then make it look fancy, right? You can use apps like CapCut. So TikTok is really big on CapCut now. If you like, go through TikTok feeds, you'll see a lot of people doing CapCut features because that's like the new video editing app. Before it was InShot, right? I was using InShot for everything. I still do. I'm just now getting used to using CapCut. Um, I still rock hard with InShot because InShot I, has been there for me from day one. So I'm not going to give up on InShot. But I'm now starting to use CapCut uh, because now that I see that that is the popular thing, uh, especially on TikTok as well. Facebook, still going to use InShot. I don't care. But if you notice the quality of my videos, right? I have an iPhone 13 Pro Max and I put it on the highest which is, I believe, 4K at 60 frames per second. That's what I use. And that's why my videos look the way that they do. So video quality is important. No, you don't have to go and spend $5,000 on a fancy camera. Just get a phone that has 4K on it and make sure you record your videos in 4K. I record my videos portrait, right? Because on TikTok, everything's portrait. Like, try not to record um, landscape. Um, that's for YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> right but i record everything um portrait style uh because also youtube also has youtube shorts so we have instagram reels we got tiktok and now we have youtube shorts right so i also repurpose my content on here as well too so i'm repurposing content that's like the new thing now so if you're creating content on social media you want to repurpose it so if you're posting it on instagram post it on facebook reels Post it on TikTok, uh, TikTok, post it on YouTube shorts and just, you know, make sure it's, a, you know, available for everybody. And then, of course, you can uh, spend extra money and pay for the ads to build your audience as well uh, and build your following because that's literally what I did. And then I also would share my post. So I would message different people and be like, hey, like this is my new post. Can you check it out and like and share and share it with somebody comment you know that's another way to build engagement as well too because instagram likes to see facebook likes to see tiktok likes to see that you're engaged uh in the comments when people comment like when you have a lot of comments instagram says oh that's a good thing right and then sometimes like you'll end up in the explore page i've exp i've ended up in the explore page multiple times right and some days i'll come in not expecting my content to pull certain numbers and i come in and I see 30,000 and I'm like, um, how, right? One of my reels on Instagram, actually, um, it was a production video. One of my first production videos from my build a song with me series. I think it was my second video that I posted. And because I changed the way I recorded the video and I posted it at three o'clock and I left it alone, 21,000 views. And sometimes you have those random spurts where like, oh, Instagram is favoring me today. I like this. This is good, right? So honestly, if I could close off with these few things, I would say number one, uh, make sure your profile is diverse. Right? Have a diverse profile. So um, get some professional photos done. Post it, right? Post your performances. Um, post yourself playing. Like that's important. Like people want to see what kind of skills you have. So post that. Uh, take advantage of your analytics, Really research your analytics and know when the best time to post is so that you can reach the biggest audience that you can, right? And this goes for all social media platforms, Facebook, YouTube, um, TikTok, right? YouTube, the best time to post on YouTube is after 6 p.m. That's when everybody is on there, right? Post to YouTube shorts, repurpose your content. And it's not gonna happen overnight. So it's gonna take, time like you have to be consistent with it um, especially if you're posting like videos of yourself be consistent with it post two to three times a week you don't need to go overboard and do every day but at least two to three times a week and then be consistent with it consistency will give you these numbers
to answer it anyway. <laughs> What's your question? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um, the question was, um, if on YouTube you're able to monetize your content, are you able to monetize your content across all platforms? Yes, but I know that they're changing things, right? Because I know... I knew a lot of people were getting monetized on Instagram, right? Like I had friends who were making money off of their reels and whatnot, but I'm hearing that they're not going to be doing that anymore. They're cutting back or they're just not doing it at all, period. Um, I've been trying to figure out this whole monetization game, especially on TikTok because I'm doing very well on TikTok. So I've been trying to figure that out. Still haven't figured it out yet. I know that if you go live, people can send you gifts. And that amounts to money, but it's not much. And TikTok rips people off, in my opinion. Um, I've never been able to monetize on any of my platforms, but I'm hoping to be able to monetize on YouTube. But YouTube has also changed their rules. Before, it, you just needed a thousand subscribers to monetize. Now you need a thousand subscribers. You need 10 million video. Sh uh, what was it? Uh, YouTube short watch time. You need 4,000. I don't know how much it is right now. 4,000 or something watch time hours. So they've added more. Um, oh, well, you definitely need the 1,000 subscribers. And then they said you also need one of these two. So it's either you have the watch hours or you have the YouTube short watch hours, which is 10 million. Yeah, exactly, exactly, right? So I'm just gonna stick with YouTube for now. Um, and then I'm hoping that somehow on TikTok I'll be able to monetize that because I'm half, almost halfway to 50,000. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to, but I'll have to just talk to people who are, in it and figure that out yeah yeah thanks for your question that was a great question <laughs> any other questions <laughs> no i know i think it is unfair it is right <sighs> listen man people say this all the time they said you work so hard on your page why are you not making money off of this i said ask ask mike uh mark zuckerberg ask him please i said run me my money and run me my cut you see all this stuff that i do but you know what even though i do a lot of things i know that the re reward is going to be greater right so whether i'm not getting whether i'm um getting monetized or not do you know how many opportunities i've gotten just because of what I post on social media, I've gained clients for my business because of this. I've gotten performance opportunities because of this. So no type of monetization will ever replace the amount of opportunities and relationships. I believe those are more valuable than making money because those long lasting relationships and connections will bring me the funding that I need, right? Like that's why you can't rely on social media platforms to make you money. Right. If your page is top notch, like people will want to work with you a lot more because they see like how much effort that you put into your stuff. Like I don't just throw things together and just post it. Like some things I'm just like, okay, I'm not posting that. Nope, not doing that. Right. I make sure that I have quality content. And even that goes as far as my photos as well, too. I make sure my photos are top notch. Every single photographer that I've worked with has been black. Like for like black people yeah so my photographer who did these recent photos she's black my whole team my makeup artist my my hairdresser my assistant i style myself yes i style myself so for those who are wondering no i don't hire a stylist i style myself <laughs> and um i get all, most of my clothing from sheen right so that fur jacket that you see i bought it on sheen right my jewelry is a mix between sheen and a company called vitali right so my rings for example are from vitali my necklace is from vitali my earrings are from sheen right so sheen is literally like i style myself for all of my shoots nobody helps me style i figure it out i do it myself 
it's just a way to you know save money as well too because nobody has money to be paying for a stylist every single shoot right and this was actually a new photographer that i worked with and she delivered she really delivered tell you that there's more photos coming that's just the that's just the yeah i have other photos that i'm going to post later on but those were those were my favorites from the shoot and even like that photo there at the end um i'm gonna be featured on a magazine and that's the photo that they're using for the magazine cover so even opportunities like that right companies wanting to meet to feature in their magazines and want to use my photos and all that but the thing with that is they need to remember to credit the photographers like one um i think it was a blog or news post or whatever they used my photos and did not tag my photographer and my photographer reached out to me he was like you know these companies really need to credit the photographers and i'm just like i sent them all the credits i don't know why they didn't credit you i make sure that they credit the photographer and some some outlets do do such a great job at crediting the people but yeah i made sure like even for this um magazine cover that i'm going to be on they need to make sure that they credit the the photographer because it's important to do that right so yeah and then i've also been featured in six print magazines over my career right so like i said those are more valuable than me making money on off of this platform like if you tie like i was saying earlier if you tie your value to money you're not going to go very far in life right because once you don't have any money then it's like you have no value because you're basing your value off of that you have to base your value on more than just money right and opportunities like you have to value you, you yourself as a person right if you don't value yourself as a person, nobody is going to value you at all. So that's the thing about social media. Like, you have to know yourself, <laughs> know who you are, and value yourself because some people will just use social media as a way to be like, oh, yeah, so this is me. It's my persona on social media. But then in real life, it's like, you know? So that's why I strive to be who I am in person and be the same person on social media. And not to tie my value to social media. I just make my posts and they come off. <laughs> yeah. 